because you're editing so much, I'm going to really fuck with it. Just keep taking my sunglasses on and off. <laughs> <laughs> Who did think of that? I think it was you. No, it wasn't me. You, you guys were already called dry cleaning when I joined. It wasn't you. It wasn't me. <laughs> Do you remember? Actually, yeah, no, I don't. It was either you, me, or Tom. <laughs> I guess it wasn't us, then. <laughs> Tom, um, Tom's not here because, well he was here and he had to leave because he was spontaneously very ill. <laughs> it did come about quite suddenly and we had a few names kicking about. Actually, I've got What other names did you have? I can't remember. Not, not, many, not any good ones. Definitely mm. not any good ones. I remember not liking it at first. Really? Yeah, and then I was, very, I was definitely wrong. So it wasn't you that thought of it then? It might have been. <laughs> I just, you thought of it anyway. Actually, no, I can probably conclu conclusively say that it wasn't because it's not on my list. I have oh, a, I have a list of band that. names which is constantly being updated that's probably got close to about 50 names on it now. Puffy stickers. The puffy stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the name Joy Greening, yeah. but I feel very at ease with saying that because I did not think of it. Yeah. I well, I don't, like, don't think anyone did by the sounds of it. Yeah, where did it come from? <laughs> it must have been Tom. Maybe someone else just named us. The sort of domesticity of it is um, quite in, in line with the way we were practicing at the time in the garage. No one else had seen it. It was literally like, you know, Lewis's mum or dad would sometimes stick their head in and tell us that dinner was ready. It's quite nice to see your band name everywhere, though. Yeah, nice to no, see. That's the, that's well, the I remember the first time it was written in a place where we hadn't written it. I mean, actual dry cleaners. Oh. So when you're going around, you're like, oh, no, no, no. I do yeah. see what you mean. Yeah. It doesn't often say dry cleaning, though. Yeah, so when you see dry cleaning, that's good. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's always dry cleaners. It's like, nearly. And then every now and then, it's a dry cleaning, and you're like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> you said I was a dickhead. Not long after we came up with the band name, I was in Japan, and as soon as I got to the airport, I saw uh, dry cleaner on the dry cleaners, and then in Japanese as well. So I took a picture, sent it to maybe Tom and Nick, and maybe Flo if he was in the band by this point. Mm -hmm. And then it became our WhatsApp logo, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it became the, it became part of the EP artwork. And then for Nick's birthday, his girlfriend made. The t-shirt she hand embroidered. She embroidered, it, yeah. yeah. She it was really nice. She made me a t-shirt with the dry cleaning logo embroidered on. But and we liked it so much that we wanted some. Last weekend, I went to a bead, rock, and gem show, a big trade show that sells like crystals and stuff, with my friend Jo, and she broke it to me that it just says cleaning. Yeah. She looked at it and she was like cleaning, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was wearing it, it's the first time I've ever worn one. And she was like, oh, why does it say cleaning? And I was like, ah. And then I like pretended that I knew. I was like, yeah, we thought it'd be cool if it just said cleaning. And like, I tried to just like cover my... Like, actually inside, I was like, oh, shit. And, and, but then I was like, oh, yeah, like, we, yeah, we, we knew that. <laughs> she's gonna, she's probably gonna see this and be like, you, why did you lie? Um, yeah. Oh, we <laughs> the way I see it though, right, doesn't that make it more, it makes it more valuable because it's like a mistake. You know like those stamps, those American stamps where things are printed wrong and they're worth millions? <laughs> yeah, it says cleaning. We knew that. Yeah. We knew yeah. That. <laughs> it makes the t-shirt so much better. I know, it doesn't I, have, I, you can't, you don't know what band it is and it doesn't even have the band's name. No, it actually does have the band's name. I've been reassuring everyone, like, it does say the band's name, and now I can't even say that. We're going to have to send out an apology to all, all the people who bought one, We're gonna have all, to all send three people. A little tiny embroidered <laughs> thing that says dry. Like an iron on patch. <laughs> Tom and Nick and Lewis were playing together before I joined for six months, more than that? Maybe six months, but we were rehearsing sometimes once a month 
sometimes a, a few times. We just we're just more hanging out. We'd all been musicians for a long period of time, and then we had this period of time where none of us were really in bands that were doing anything. So we had some free time. She so started jamming. We had like four songs, which changed quite a lot when you joined. It sped up quite a bit, some of them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't really plan to even really gig at the beginning. We were just jamming. We realised pretty early on that we wanted someone to do the singing. Because not we had considered maybe we, we would do it all together, the three of us. And it, that was never really going to happen. So we... Uh, we started thinking about people to ask. Me, Flo and Lewis have known each other quite a long time. And then Tom knew Flo separately as well. So we were all kind of interlinked already. Yeah. And it was Tom's suggestion. Um, he was like, I think Flo would be really good at this. And immediately we just all thought, yeah, like that's, that's going to be really great. Without any kind of like, prerequisite ideas about whether it was what it was going to be. Yeah. And then I think maybe it took you quite a while to play, sort of, like, convince yourself that it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it did. But not because I didn't want to do it. Just, just shyness. Like mm. I never performed before. And also that idea where you don't want to let people down. You don't want to try something and then decide, actually, this is way too scary and I can't do it, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't want to get into that position, so I was like, oh, if I do it, I kind of have to, like, do it. <laughs> so it was, like, almost six months of just thinking about that and thinking okay like what like how could i do this in a way that would be manageable and not too scary yeah and then i initially said no but then tom rang me straight away and and i tried to like i was like i could see it ringing and i was like no you can't do it you've got to just say no because it's too frightening and he just talked to me for like an hour just telling me that I should definitely do it. <laughs> and in the end, I basically was like, okay. But inside was still like, I'm too scared. He really went into the deep end as well. I think myself, Nick and Tom, our first gigs would have been to like three people. Mm. But we, like, we were supporting our friends' bands and they would, like had a decent amount of people come to shows. Like yeah. I would have been able to deal with that, like as not a front person. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the other thing. <laughs> I know, I always forget that. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, you're a focal point, yeah. Mm. Everyone's looking at you. Mm. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> News and magazine. Uh, lots of places. I had loads of things written down in the notes app on my phone and I just took I printed them out and took them and I was collecting them from adverts, overhearing things people said or things that people said to me in conversation like sentences that I liked or thoughts like spontaneous thoughts if something dramatic happened or if I felt very sad about something and wasn't really in a position to uh, like communicate that to anyone I would write it down um, or just funny words if I just thought of funny words, I would write those down too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, with an idea that at some point I'll use, these are going to be used for something, because I, I make drawings and different kinds of um, art. So I collect, like, photo, I take little photos of things and write things down, like most people who make things do. Um, not with an idea that they would be lyrics, just I had no idea what they were going to be. I guess it's just, it, it I collect them, I guess is the best way to put it. Like, it's like a collection of things. It's like someone who picks up bottle caps or something. I do that just with words. Um, and, I, and, and in a way, they sort of all end up a bit wiped clean because they're just all, they all wind up in one place, all written by me, and then sometimes, you know, I don't mean all written by me in terms of some of them are written by people who write slogans for adverts and stuff like that. Or also YouTube comments. I sometimes uh, pinch things from YouTube comments. Gold mine. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but they, they all get very jumbled up, so a line in a dry cleaning song might be the first half of something and the second half of something else. So they get really cut up into quite small pieces sometimes. Like Magic of Megan, for example, has lots of lines from journalism in it from different sources but and, and rearranged and 
that's a really good example where lots of the lines in that are one half of one thing and another half of another thing. And some of them I've made up to sound like that, but some of them really are that, taken from like, the mirror or whatever. So yeah, it is, it is kind of like collage. Yeah. I guess something that, when it's just myself, Nick and Tom, what we bonded over was, we talked about the feelies, we talked about a lot. Mm. Early the REM. The necessaries. The necessaries, yeah. Mm. From a personal point of view, I quite wanted to sort of really simplify what I was doing and allow a bit more space in the, in the band for mm. other stuff. And I think I was maybe, there were, it was largely sort of American influences, like all the bands you named already American, mm. but it was sort of like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. But you know, in terms of the vocal, I was looking at that, you sent me that text, do you remember? And it had like five different tracks because you were like, oh, why don't you just try like, you could try speaking at first and worry about singing or any of that kind of thing later. Uh, what about all these? Like, have a listen to these. What do you think? Kind oh, of yeah, thing. Two and you sent me yeah. Will Powers, Adventures in Su Adventures Success, in success yeah. Grace Jones, Private Life. You sent me that Dingwalls. Oh, Mark Ma Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Uh, the Anemic Boyfriends. Oh, that's a cool track, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Have you, have you heard that? No. Guys are not proud. It's really good. That's kind of like on the verge of singing. It's like speaking yeah. with a kind of a controlled up and downness to it. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, I listened loads to, my dad really liked Eels. I listened mm. loads to that song, you know, Susan's House. Mm. And also, uh, another song I really liked when I was a kid was uh, Pet Shop Boys, Western mm. Girls. That's a great song. <laughs> which is like, which are both spoken word mm. songs, essentially. But, or like Gang of Four, It's Her Factory is another one, which I listened to loads when I was like a young teenager. There's loads of things that I'm now like, oh, that's probably why I do yeah. this in the way that I do. It's quite interesting to look into like how often the sort of spoken word idea will just be kind of put in a box um, mm. but it is that it's really interesting to see how it does change it vary because I would say things like Laurie Anderson maybe John Cooper Clark with the, the musical stuff that he did maybe even um, Gil's Got Hair a lot of like his earlier stuff like it does just sound like poetry recited over music mm. and same with those other people like especially Laurie Anderson there's something really robotic which is her thing you know but there's something like really kind of quite interesting and specific about the way that the, the, those kind of people work. It didn't, for, to me, it's never sounded like just poetry recited over music. That's what I was going to say. When you say describe some spoken word, you instantly think of like poetry. Compared yeah. to every genre I can possibly think of has spoken word artist on top of it, as like an artist who speaks yep. rather than sings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just going back to that idea of things you listen to when you're a kid, it's funny when you go back to them and you're like, oh, that's why, that's why I do that now. Because this thing is in my head that I used to listen to those when I was eight. Yeah. yeah. I find it sometimes with drawing, like sometimes my automatic drawing from memory will look like The Simpsons, just because that's just what I was completely obsessed <laughs> by when I was a kid. And that's it's just like, it's just there and I can't get rid of it. Not that I, I want to, but it's like, it's just, there's nothing I can do about yeah. it. <laughs> As an individual in the band, maybe you, everyone has that, right? Yeah. You'd like sure. have a default setting almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Tom would have loads more just direct yeah. influences for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, th I remember the Radio 1 thing that he did. He gave the name of a band that I'd never even heard of. I think I can't remember. Wow. Something about that. And I was just like, yeah, definitely one of, one of my influences. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than ill-fitting, the, the funniest one that I was really flattered by, but I was like, oh, was the fast show? What? <laughs> <Actually not. laughs> I haven't seen that one. Actually, it wasn't in a review. It was something that a guy came and said to me after a show. He was like, I loved it. It was like the fast show. And I was like, <laughs> amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, like the, I, I love the fast show. So I was like, wow. And, and then later I was like, was he laughing all the way through there? Yeah, I don't know, he was just like, it was just great, it was like for my show, I loved it. <laughs> we always have fun finding reviews that are written in 
other languages and the best we can do to find out what they say is to put it through Google Translate. And then was there a German one where at the end it just said, the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> she said I was a horrible cunt. Oh, dog chocolate. Dog, obviously dog chocolate. <laughs> Always dog chocolate. The most fun to see live yeah. of any band. Um, I would... Oh, actually, I found uh, that band Hen Ogled the other day. Oh, I loved them. them. You know Aldous Harding? She's amazing, but in terms of her performance is amazing. She did a Tiny Desk concert. Oh, yeah. That is, like mind-blowing like her the way that she like emotes while she's uh singing i watched it like 30 times in a row wow i was just like i couldn't believe it it was so um it's almost it feels like you shouldn't be watching it well, it's really personal yeah but n but in a way that i really haven't seen before it's i would really recommend i would really recommend watching it <laughs> it's incredible she's just got such a like like steely look on her face the whole time that is just like you feel like she's going to beat you up but then also she might cry yeah it's like whoa so good i loved it i went to see the viagra boys the other day that was really good they were great i think we all really enjoy particularly the lead singers like his moves yeah <laughs> it, it was really good they had they it's something very simple about what they do it's quite powerful um I like their lyrics as well. They, they sounded great. Yeah, they, yeah, they were, they were really good. And po yeah, Posse, we like Posse. Oh yeah, They're we do. Of, of, of sort of, uh, uh, many of the bands that are sort of swimming around in London, that are around mm -hmm. doing a similar sort of scene and gigs that we're doing. They're, they're sort of one that stand out. Mm. Particularly that song of theirs, um, yeah, Casey TMO, and they. I just feel like it's perfectly pitched. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not even too vague. It's really quite specifically yeah. about that event. It's just subtle. Yeah. And, and just the, like the, the violin in that song is just really sort of frightening. It's really good. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed their album too. But yeah, particularly that song, I was quite like, whoa. Yeah. Roddy yeah. Plain, I really enjoyed that. Fish bar, chicken and ribs, bus pass. And a really good way to get to know someone is to do something Sorry. a bit kind of. Uh... That's Tom wishing us good luck, by the way. Oh. <laughs>